Hey guys, this is your host Gooby, and welcome to the Toon Balloon Podcast, our outlet to discuss, theorize, and enjoy our favorite webtoons with the occasional anime and manga sprinkled in between. In this week's episode, we will be covering chapters 147 through 152 of the drama webtoon series, I Love You by Quimchi. We will be touching on the harsh conditions Noel has had to endure in his life, the events that occur in these chapters, as well as some theories for what is to come. If you are an avid fan of I Love You, then please consider checking out the creator's Patreon. Quimchi creates some amazing content, and if you adore her work as much as I do, then you will not be disappointed. I will leave links in the description box below with all options to support the creator. Before we jump into the discussions, I will give a short summary for each chapter, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. If you haven't read these chapters yet, then I strongly suggest you check those out before listening to this episode because there will be spoilers. You have been warned. Now, let's talk I Love You by Quimchi. Episode 147 covers a lot of what our red-headed boy, Noel, has been doing as the days lead up to the trial. Noel is seen stressfully going about his day-to-day -day activities. These include his usual jogs and visiting a nearby pond. Noel is scolded by his grandmother as she is concerned for his well-being, which is understandable. Noel is expressing deep disdain for himself and even asks if he's holding his own grandmother back. Despite her reassurances, Noel does not seem convinced. The majority of the episode follows Noel around as he deals with the hardships in the office, particularly from his father and picking up the slack from Sang Chul. After a discussion with the lawyer over the case, Jace notes that Yonggi is only ever addressed as Noel by his family, which leads to Noel ending the chapter off with him saying that he hates his name. So, a couple of things to note about the following chapters we will be discussing is that Noel's mental state is at an all-time low. The guy is looking quite hopeless and feels as if he is a burden to his friends and family. It, it hurts to see Noel this way. I, I feel like he has been such a ball of sunshine from the get-go, but life had other plans to knock him down a few pegs. Noel is seen talking to himself at a small duck pond near his home, counting the ducks or lack thereof. My first impression to this scene was that this was Noel's safe spot that he used to visit with his mom. It is revealed later that she had him count the ducks, maybe to help calm him down, kind of like when a kid can't sleep, you have them count sheep. He says it's peaceful, calm even, and hopes to be this way as well when he was at the duck pond. This is a similar parallel to chapter one of the series. Shanae mentions that she hopes to be okay one day as well. These two individuals just dream for a time where their life isn't constantly putting them on edge. I noticed a lot of these parallels between the two of them thanks to reading some great analyses made by some awesome creators off of Instagram. Two of my personal favorite accounts is Thigh Novel and Lover of Pears because they both do some brilliant stuff out there and I think you should go check them out. One of the many other comparisons I noticed between the two of them is that they both suffer from estranged families. Noel deals with the uh, Hidaharas and only has his Nana as his one familial support system. Same as Shanae. She is only recently speaking to her suspicious sister again, but she does have her father as her main support. I can see why the two of them have so many similarities that tie them together. Although, as we see in later chapters, that despite 
how close they have grown, Noel is beginning to push people who care about him away. Noel even mentions to his Nana in this chapter that he worries he is burdening her. Now, we know that isn't true because his Nana is one of the coolest characters in the webtoon and she is so supportive and only wants the best for her grandson. But the fact that he thinks this lowly of himself speaks volumes for how he is emotionally handling the situation. It's cute in the following scenes where Noel is trying to get dressed for his trial and his grandma points out that those tags that stick out of his shirt and apparently this is one of his secret talents. (laughs) I noticed this little quirk about him in one of the past chapters from Kosuke's point of view. Little Noel has his tag sticking out even then and Noel mentions the lack of ducks at the pond and his grandmother says that they must have migrated. You know, migration is common in animals such as birds due to them being unable to handle cold weather so they seek solace in somewhere that is warmer. Um, I see that a lot where I live because where I live it's incredibly warm and I have been seeing them everywhere around my house because when I go outside there's bird poop everywhere. (laughs) So humans migrate as well. They have migrated all of their lives in order to find something better than where they were before. Birds are often used to symbolize a visual representation of pursuing something away from the negative. This quite possibly is alluding to Noel about to embark on his journey to step away from the negative climate he is living within, away from the toxic Hirahara's. Noel then says he misses his mom, and I don't blame him. From what we have seen, she loved him dearly, and it is so sad to see that he stepped away from a life of love to a hostile environment. What do you guys think happened to his mom? Do you think she passed away, or is there a slight chance that she is just not in the picture for a different reason? I feel like they haven't explicitly stated that she is dead, but they do mention that she is just not around anymore. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this. Um, My suspicion, I do think she is dead. I just, I wouldn't know what caused the death. Later, we see what Noel has to deal with in the office. For one, he gets confirmation that he wasn't going to be able to make up that interview for Oxford. And then he is ignored by Coast again and sadly is not having the best moods in the office. Thank you to Jace for at least treating Noel like a normal person here. That must be such a relief from all of the other stuff he has to deal with. For one, Sang Chul is a lazy butt and I have no idea why he even has a job. I know, I know, he has personal connections and he is a privileged schmuck. I'm gonna call him that. <laughs> But still, I can't stand the guy. Uh, anyways, to rub salt in the wound, Jace mentions that the blondie is going to be traveling overseas to study. Can I just say that there is something underlying about that boy? Like, it's one thing if he comes from a rich family, but I feel like his sole purpose is to be Noel's designated aggressor. I mean... Mrs. Hirahara put him up to the whole drugging incident with Shanae and is the reason for why Noel is in this position in the first place. Sang Chul is just another pawn of Yui's that she uses to just attack Noel because she has a lot of power over Sang Chul too and I do not know why. The boy whose existence she cannot stand is Noel so she targets him a lot. I have heard some very interesting theories from readers out there about Sang Chul's relationship with Yui that I would like to touch on later, but this chapter ends with Jace asking why Noel only ever wants to be addressed as Yonggi. It's a sad realization to the history of why he hates his name, but we'll get into that in the next segment. Episode 148, 
starts off with Noel discussing the upcoming trial with his lawyer and father in a private room. Noel isn't listening and zoning away from the conversation. Eventually, they grab his attention and tell him that the trial should go well as long as he doesn't say anything else. Then they ask for his name, and we are then introduced to a flashback that centers around the history of Noel's name. It starts off with Kid Noel and mentioning to his teacher that his name is a little too long to write on his paper. This comment proceeds to have other students ridicule his name, and Noel isn't sure why the kids think it's so weird. Then we see Yonggi telling his mom that he wants a normal name, but she reassures him that his name is special and specifies why. They come up with a nickname, Noel and he is delighted with his new name. Eventually, we are brought to the first meeting between Kosuke and Noel, where Kosuke is seen as a shadowed being that only belittles his name. He continually calls him nothing because his name, Noel, is similar to the term for zero. We progressively watch Noel age and continually affirm that his name is special, but is shot down with every confrontation. We see Noel cower with each comment about him being nothing, and eventually he himself wishes he could feel nothing. The chapter brings us back to present day Noel, as he is attempting to call Kosuke but Noel overhears Kosuke's drunken self say that he has no brother and that he wants him out of his life. Noel is seen reminiscing about these comments from Kosuke while he stands in the courtroom. The chapter ends with Noel stating his full name and pleading guilty. So this chapter gives us a lot of background over why Noel hates his name. It's because of Kosuke. I'd just like to say to those kids that said it was weird to have such a long name, really put a bad taste in my mouth. Like it's pretty normal in a lot of cultures to have a lot of names for one person. But they're kids, so I won't dawdle on that for too long. It just rubbed me the wrong way. Anyways, the thing about the way Kosuke poisoned his name for him is that he did it in such a calculated way. It's one thing to just be radio silent to someone you dislike, but Kosuke digged for years into Noel's insecurities. He planted on a thought, made him unsure, and then just kept digging and digging at him with constant commentary about him being nothing, a zero, a Noel, that he hates him, that, you know, it just, it was constant. I don't think Kosuke has ever addressed this treatment of Noel, even though in the beginning of the story, Kosuke is trying to act like a big brother, but it doesn't seem like he ever brought up the abuse he brought or any of the disgusting behavior he portrayed, and he never apologized for it. No accountability, and for some reason, he is confused on why Noel is so distant towards him now. All he has ever done in his life is alienate this boy, make him feel like nothing, because that was his intention to do. I want to know what changed, and why does he put like such a facade up in front of him when in reality, that phone call we hear at the end only spells out the exact feelings he has for Noel. I really do think he subconsciously feels guilty, but he will never admit to it. I do think he found this young boy as a threat to his life and took it out on the poor kid because he was an easy target. He never thinks of what his father does wrong because in reality, it's his dad's fault that this whole thing has even started. But Kosuke won't acknowledge that since he has been trained to idolize this man since childhood. At this point, I am beyond disappointed in Kosuke because regardless of his upbringing, he should have some understanding of why his relationship with Noel went sour. He, like, I feel like a normal person would be able to acknowledge when you do bad things. 
but that's not like in Kosuke's personality to do. Because I mean, he seems to dismiss a lot of people he meets, like he does with Shanae, and he doesn't really acknowledge like when someone's feelings are hurt. It's just, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> so he ignores the wrongdoings and he refuses to take accountability for the way he has treated Noel. Not to mention that he still uses a name that he has purposefully tainted since the day they met. And he should know what he did, but no. No, we won't get that from him unless someone puts him in his place. And I really hope this happens because Kosuke needs a serious wake-up call. Although Kosuke has tainted the meaning behind Noel's name and has him believe that he is a zero, a nothing, a nobody, the thing is, Noel was given this name so that one day people can look up to him. To see him as a champion his name is very strong and had lo- like it has a lot of beautiful meaning i don't think kosuke knows that zeros become heroes just look at hercules also i have been replaying kingdom hearts lately and there are literal nobodies in the game that become somebodies the way kimchi illustrates kosuke from noel's perspective in those flashbacks is pretty similar to how Heartless look in the video game that I was just talking about. If you think about it, Kosuke is pretty heartless as a kid towards Noel's feelings. I feel like this whole effort to make Noel feel small will bite Kosuke in the butt one day. And ooh, I cannot wait for that. <laughs> Cause Kosuke needs it. Kosuke needs someone who can stand up to him. Kosuke is going to be in for it when Noel does step up to the plate and shows him what he is capable of. And he's kind of already given a taste of it after his short time in the office. And Kosuke has always felt threatened just by Noel's existence, though he never had to be, you know, scared of him. But with him and antagonizing this boy, he's going to feel the real threats soon. Noel begins to understand Kosuke's real feelings of him after overhearing a drunk Kosuke confess all of his hate that he has kept internally for Noel over the phone. This is off-putting for Noel as he has tried to desperately build a foundation with Kosuke. Yet all Kosuke ever does is ridicule or dismiss him. To hear the actual words directly or not, that Kosuke wants nothing to do with him, it's gonna hurt. But it also must be what's driving Noel because now nothing is holding him back anymore and he is going to make choices for himself without feeling the need to please everyone around him. I'm sure Noel has stopped trying to please his own father a long time ago, but he has really tried to stay on Kosuke's good side since he wants to build a sibling bond with him. But now that he knows how Kosuke feels, He doesn't feel like he needs to keep up this act to look good in his brother's eyes anymore. So once this recollection has been made, Noel takes ownership of his full name. Nolan Oliver T. Lochlane. I don't know if I said that right, which is such a nice name, like own it, Noel. (laughs) That's what makes you special. And I feel like names can give a real insight about a person. And I can tell that his was made with a lot of care from a loving person his mom. I hope that he can be proud of his roots once again because Lord knows he deserves it. Also, Noel pleads guilty. Was this shocking for you? I wasn't just sad since I feel like this is literally his only way to get away from these people. But we'll touch on that more in the next segment. Episode 149 begins immediately after Noel pleads guilty and shows the aftermath of it all. Rand is visually upset, shoving Noel and expresses why he had to be his son. Rand leaves the room and as he is waiting out in the hallway, Kosuke shows up and asks what's wrong. Rand gives Kosuke the task to watch Noel. 
Kosuke does so, and Noel is not pleased to see him. He alludes to Kosuke only being here for his father's sake, and not for watching out for him. The two have a back and forth. Eventually, Noel answers Kosuke's question as to why he pled guilty. Noel says he wants to get away from the family, and their argument ends when the lawyer shows up to end their conversation, and this cues Kosuke to leave the room. The lawyer tells Noel of what his sentencing will look like, 120 days, serving time, and to be readmitted to a rehabilitation program for his anger. The two of them leave the room since they have to head back to the judge. They then walk past Mrs. Hirahara, who quietly reminds Noel of her presence in his life and a threat of what she is capable of. So we get to see that little snapshot of everyone's reaction of Noel pleading guilty. Like, Kosuke and Rand actually look concerned, but then there is Yui just giving the fakest <gasps> la gasp. Anyways, I think we can all agree that Rand's actions at the beginning of the chapter are unacceptable. Um, you're a grown man. I would assume this behavior both comes from a place of frustration and worry, but Rand is Rand. I, I wish we could get an episode dedicated to Rand's perspective because his opinion of Noel always seems to fluctuate. Here, he is aggressive and essentially degrading his son, questioning why he had to be his, and okay, dude, you were the one who couldn't keep your willy in your pocket. I'm a little heated with him because he doesn't put much effort into being a father for either of his sons, and it's so freaking sad. And due to his lack of being a good parent, one of his kids are going to jail because he is just suffering so much from being around the people he makes him be around. And also, we get this interesting line from Rand when he says that Noel is going to be the death of him and that this will all lead to him having cardiac arrest. Okay, boy, red flag 101. We don't say things that are going to implement our imminent death. Okay, so it's quite ominous considering that Noel is also looking down on him. Now, if that's not foreshadowing, then I don't know what to call it. Noel felt like the only way to get away from this horrible family was to spend time in jail. That's tragic. And then we had to see Rand go off and compare his two sons under his breath right after speaking with Kosuke in the hallway. Like, I cannot with this man. I don't know what he wants. He's just, he's a mess. We're gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna move on. So Kosuke tiptoes in the moment of opportunity to please his father because he tells Noel that he should be able to worry about his brother. But considering that Noel overheard that message from the other night, he isn't accepting any of this. And you know, the very first thing he asks Noel isn't exactly caring. He asks, why did you do it? Why didn't you consider our father? Not a, how are you feeling? Are you okay? It's one thing to ask, why did you do it? But it's another thing to just be like, well, why didn't you think of this guy? Well, Kosuke, why didn't you think of Noel when you first asked that question? Anyways, uh, his only concern here, I feel, is pleasing their dad. And even Noel po points this out. You know, uh, I really wish that these two had a moment of time where they could just dish it all out. I want the whole shebang. What they honestly feel because their whole sour relationship will only ever be settled with a discussion that they can't get out of. And I feel like anytime there is this opportunity to hear these boys talk about their feelings, it's always getting interrupted. Like just now, the lawyer came in and interrupted it. So we didn't get this like interaction that these two desperately need they need to be able to just go and like duke it out and not like with their fists but just to be honest with each other because for once I wish I could see them just talk about themselves and I feel like Noel has resisted ever trying to confront him about his feelings because he's wanted him to have a good relationship with Kosuke but at this point 
he's done. He wants to be honest. And I need that. I need this interaction. <laughs> so, you know, the lawyer shows up and he gives the news about the sentencing being 120 days and he needs to do some rehab. So now Noel has had to undergo rehab for his anger before. So the first question is, um, he asks, where does he have to go? And that's an interesting question, Noel. Where were you admitted previously? Possibly somewhere that has close connections. Possibly with the medical company that the evil Yui hovers over. Just, just an observation. And then we see that the two of them actually interact at the end of this chapter. And she essentially threatens him since she somehow has all the connections in the world. And she terrifies me since she seems to puppet everything around her. I have no idea why she is like this. She's just a pure monster who likes to torture people. Also, what was up with that weird panel of Yui looking back at Kosuke in the hallway? I couldn't, I, I couldn't figure out who the heck that was that was next to Kosuke because I was like, who, who is that she's looking? So when I read the comments and I realized, oh, that's uh, Gun Kim saying Jules' father. It took me a minute to, you know put two and two together. I was like, oh, two trench coat boys. Okay, whatever. And then to find out that people actually speculate that he could be Kosuke's dad. I can ride with that theory. What do you think? What do you suppose Yui's relationship is with Gun Kim? Since she seems to hold a lot of authority over his son, Sang Chul as well. Do you think Kosuke isn't Ran's son? Episode 150 starts off with some inverted panels of a pleading Noel apologizing for an unknown reason. Then it pans over to a disgruntled image of Kid Noel in a newspaper. These images are shown while we read about some girl talk between Yu Jing and her friend Man Li that they are sharing. Yu Jing turns to see the news about Noel pleading guilty in his trial. Shocked, she rushes to make a new phone call with a mysterious person. She is seen to be pleased with the circumstances, but announces that she and the mysterious person's timeline have changed, and they must act quickly. The phone call ends, and the panels largely focus on the witch, Yui. We are then shown the Hirahara's avoiding paparazzi to get back in their car, and once they are seated in the vehicle, Yui has some comments to share. She says he should be thankful for the judge to allow him to be free for the holidays and even pokes at his relationship with Alyssa. Noel returns home to his Nana and we then are shown what Shinne has been up to, which is getting her stuff ready to leave Minyuk's house to settle back into her home. Maya and Shinne have a heart to heart and the two reconcile with the hopes of being friends again. The girls walk downstairs per Maya's mother's request. Shanae is grabbing something to eat and asks Maya's mom if there was anything interesting on the news today. The chapter ends with Shanae noticing what Maya's mother is watching on TV. The latest newscast of Noel's sentencing. So this is one of my favorite episodes so far in this lineup because I believe in Yu Jing supremacy. I'm going to touch on the clues left about Noel's past in the beginning of this chapter and that fantastic newspaper article of the moose. First off, the emotional inverted scenes of Noel. I suspect this is when they dragged him off to rehab for the first time after his incident with Kosuke. Now it says that Noel had attacked Kosuke and was sent to the center to work on his anger, which touches on Noel's familiarity of rehab in the first chapter, I mean the last chapter. My first implication here is that Noel didn't do whatever they think he did. I actually think it's our puppeteer Yui who pulled the strings to abuse this boy. Kosuke most likely had a confrontation with Noel, and that's for sure. When don't they have confrontations? But I don't think Noel ever had malicious intent where it warranted the need to be rehabilitated. 
Kosuke loved pushing Noel's buttons when they were children. He's always making him feel small. And I think this could make anyone upset. No one advocated for this boy and would just let Kosuke say such horrible things to him. And whatever happened, Noel couldn't take it anymore. I also suspect that they drug this boy like crazy because he refuses to take any medication at the beginning of the series. When he was in the hospital after getting drugged the first time, he just didn't want to take medication. And people were kind of aware of his personality already in that Hirahara hospital. So the newspaper article also mentions that Rand and Yui reconciled after a separation of a sort. So the two were separated and a year after getting back together, Noel is brought into the public eye. But the first thing anyone hears about him is this incident, which I think for sure was calculated. Also, that article was written by a Jane Kim, a person of the Kim family, the one we suspect could be Kosuke's father. Hmm. Interesting. Also, that Moose article was stellar, and I was surprised by how in-depth it was. Like, something about it having, like, Moose getting launched into space and they were going to go into orbit. I don't know. <laughs> there was just so much detail that I was, like, really immersed into it. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people agreed when I read the comment section because I was really hoping other people noticed the article. And it was just hilarious seeing all the reactions to it. So there is also another article title in the corner mentioning a woman who gambled away charity funds. So based on some speculations, could this be Shanae's mom? I feel like that woman has a darker story behind her that we haven't learned yet, and this could be it. And a lot of the theories I've seen are really, really interesting because a lot of them suspect that the relationship died out because of her gambling addiction. And maybe the reason why Shin Hai, Shanae's sister, was able to give forth so much money to help pay for all of their bills is because their mother got it from some sort of gambling issue. So those are just a little bit of tidbits of theories I saw that I was really interested in and I'm all for them. <laughs> so anyways, Yu Jing, notices the news and is actually pleased by the results. It was very strange at first until I saw what she was doing. So it seems like what Noel did was a positive effect on her secret news article. Or it could even be like a big expose on just exposing everything that's wrong with the Hirahara family. So here's one. I wonder who she was speaking to on the phone. It was on a burner phone, so that way no one can listen in. And I don't know if Yui has some sort of like connection and she might because she's terrifying that like to be able to um, listen in on people's phone calls. Like, is she the FBI guy? I don't know. <laughs> and I suspect that Yujing is gathering as much dirt as she can on Yui because Yui, from what we understand already, abuses her medical facilities for her own personal gain. It's what she did with Noel, and most likely with other people. Yui is also known for dealing drugs, as we have seen her do with Sang Chul to use against Shanae. So, and we also see Sang Chul use drugs in like the very beginning of the series, like maybe like uh, chapter three or four, the first party that Shanae was invited to, and his first incident was putting drugs into a drink. And that's what ended up getting Noel in the hospital. And he admits that he gets these drugs from Yui. So she's got something going on with that too. So Yu Jing mentions that they only have 120 days or less. And that's even mentioned by the lawyer that if he's good, they'll reduce the sentencing. Which, that is the amount of days before Noel is put into rehab. They could be calculating a way to use and get this to the press in time before Noel is admitted and spread it out to the press. Or maybe Noel, they're going to attempt to use Noel as a sort of a mole to figure out what's going on inside the facilities. I'm not sure. I'm just really excited to see what she has in store for us. And like I said, 
using supremacy. <laughs> now that everyone has gotten into the car, um, for some reason, Yui is bringing up Alyssa, of all people. But here's the thing. I guess this is her way of making him stay close, since that relationship is just another one of her many manipulation tactics. She doesn't want Noel to have a nice time before his sentencing starts. She wants to hurt him. So might as well bring in the girl who could care less about him, make him stage a relationship, force him to go parties he doesn't like, and have him in a good enough distance so that way Yui can continue to poke at him and manipulate him because she's awful. And, ew, <laughs> I just, uh, I can't stand the thought that Alyssa is just going along with everything that Yui says. And I know a lot of people don't like Alyssa. I don't like Alyssa. She kind of just uses people. She did it with Shanae. She hurt Shanae from what we know from the past. And she hurts Noel emotionally. It's horrible. So let's get to a good scene because I'm tired of all the Yui, uh, Yui fits. She gives me a, a headache. So... <laughs> Let's get to a good scene with Noel's Nana, because she's an all-star. She's great for being that one shed of light on Noel's dark day. So when they see um, each other, she just immediately hugs him, and she just says, I'm going to be here for you, and she ain't leaving. And she says, if anyone tries to get to her, she's going to go pew pew. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> so we then are shown what Shanae is a about to do she's about to go home and it looks like her and Maya have a really mature chat it was nice it was really cool to see Maya touch on her flaws and realize her mistakes and they were able to reconcile it was just it was really nice I'm just glad but this chapter ends with Shanae having to see Noel on the news which unfortunately will reveal a lot and the ripple effect is not going to be pleasant. Episode 151 begins with a melting snowflake with a small narration of Noel's first encounters with Shanae. Shanae is seen struggling to get a hold of Noel as it seems he has blocked her number. Shanae arrives at school and speaks with Dieter to see if he has any information on what is going on. Both of them realize that they are in the same boat and decide to go check on Noel at his school. We are then shown scenes of Noel enduring all of the gossip surrounding his trial. Much to his displeasure from being the center of attention, he decides to leave the school altogether. Noel rushes outside to bump into Shanae, and both of them get into an argument that leads to Shanae believing that their friendship was never real. Noel is unable to really open up to her, but he embraces Shanae nevertheless. Eventually, they part ways, and Noel begins to address Shanae by her surname at the end of the chapter. So, this chapter was incredibly painful to read, and I think a lot of people can agree with me on this. <laughs> we, we get those little notes of what Noel used to say to Shanae in the earlier chapters of the series. It's so sad to see Noel not feel like he isn't good enough for his friends anymore. Dude, it's not true. This inner circle you created loves you dearly. And to see that he doesn't feel worthy of it at all is so sad. Noel was our ball of sunshine in this whole series whose heart was meant to make friends. The Hirahara's have crushed his spirit, and it breaks my heart. To see him block his friends and chooses to walk alone, the last thing he needs right now is to be alone. He needs his support system, because regardless of all the bad days he has suffered, he has had so many good ones with the friends he has made along the way, and I truly hope this doesn't end anything for him. And I don't think it will. 
The scenes where Shanae is questioning their friendship and Noel is desperately trying to hold on to that. He desperately tries to hold on to her was like his own message to her that everything they went through was real. But he can't vocalize it because he's just worried she'll get hurt again. The moment they finish hugging and you see that scene where it almost seemed like they were just going to kiss, but they did not, of course. But the moment we see him put his hand on her face and gazes at her, all he can see is the day she got hurt after hitting her head in the pool. All he can see was the amount of pain she has un- had to undergone because to him, he caused that. And I actually think when he pled guilty in the courtroom, it wasn't just because it was his out to get away from the family, but it was also him feeling like he truly is guilty for what happened to his friend. And, you know, I think he's just trying to protect her. I think Noel just feels this immense guilt for what happened to her back at that party and worries if she stays close to him, she'll burn. He decides he won't tell her anything because because of this, and he lets go of their friendship. When I saw Shanae's mouth drop like that when he addressed her as you, it had me in tears. Now what do we do? Gosh, I'm, I'm glad that Shanae is able to bring both Dieter and Soshi for this because I know this trio is going to need all the manpower possible to get our boy Noel back. I also think when Noel addresses Shanae as you, it reminds me of the theories I used to see and I can definitely see it where they believe that at the end of the series, someone is going to say, I love you. That's a pun. And maybe in this case, it probably is Noel. Like, you know, the uh, alluding to it is that him calling her you and that he likes puns kind of makes a little bit of sense. We don't know yet, though, but we'll see. It definitely it has some power to it. We can see that these two have a strong connection. And this whole um, interaction between these two felt really real. And you could feel that compassion that they have for one another and that need to want to stick together, but they can't. It's really tragic. So I am worried for Noel because he is at his lowest. And honestly, with the way he is approaching all of this is frightening. Him pushing away family, pushing away friends, closing off everything that brings him joy that's a dangerous path that he is walking right now. And I sure hope that the power of friendship kicks in because that's what he needs. And that's what I believe is going to get him out of this. Episode 152 begins with Noel choking up beside a car outside in the rain. He's crouched over and overhears Soishi and Dieter looking for him. Noel is upset he is disappointing everyone and bids a farewell, stating that everyone would be better off without him. Soishi and Dieter manage to find Shanae crying by herself in the rain. After hearing that they missed Noel, Dieter then offers to have them stay at his place. His sister is a big help, and the trio are seen in Dieter's room. Shanae is wrapped in a blanket, and Swooshi says Dieter may have better luck with talking with her. The two have a discussion over the events that have happened. Shanae doesn't know why she feels so hurt by this loss, and she claims that she has lost friends in the past, but they never made her feel this sad. Dieter states it's because she loves Noel, though also stating that he loves Noel as well. Dieter's sister calls him down for some food, but Shanae grabs his hand and pleads for him to stay by her side. The chapter ends with him accepting her request. 
What Noel was doing at the beginning of this chapter is something I can actually relate to on a personal level. I know I have experienced crying to the level where it feels like my body can't do it anymore and tries to find a different outlet to release the stress. Noel choking up and retching the way he was hurts to watch, but it is realistic when he has been under so much stress and pain. And everyone knows friendship breakups are the worst. Uh, A person you are connected to, and then one day, no more. Both he and Shanae are suffering. The thing is, Shanae is allowing others to help her with her pain now, unlike Noel. Noel is refusing his friends to speak with him and shuts everyone out. And please, Noel, let them in. The boy who works so hard to just want to build connections and friends and all he ever asks people is to just be his friend is denying that friendship, is denying all the connections he's built. The one thing that he works so hard to build and that is friendship is just something that he has completely disregarded in his life now because he doesn't feel worthy of it. That's just a complete broken down version of our our boy Noel. And I just want him to be able to feel worthy again. Please Noel, let them in. You need them. Now I wanna cry again. <laughs> So the boys take Shanae to Dieter's house since it is freezing outside and we get to see his sister for the first time. She has a wonderful character design and is so helpful to everybody. She's great. So she has no luck with Shanae. So he then suggests if Shanae will open up to Dieter. Dieter is my favorite character in this whole series. Um, He has this calm quality in him that is really charming in a sea of hurt characters. And the thing about Dieter is he's a military kid. So he travels a lot to wherever his dad is stationed. So he handles loss differently, at least in the sense of friendships. Though he does admit that this loss hurts a lot too because he was close to Noel. But he is capable of coping easier because he has to undergone a lot of losing friendships in the past. To see him comfort Shanae is both sweet and a little disheartening because even though I like these two together and I ship it, I do, I am going to try to be realistic. I feel like Shanae is developing feelings for Noel that she isn't really able to understand yet. Considering that Dieter is a supportive friend who will help his friends regardless. I just don't want to see him get hurt. I know when Dieter mentions that Shanae loves Noel, he mostly means platonically, since he includes that he loves Noel as well. But when I saw that face she made after hearing those words, I think she had an epiphany that she isn't really ready to accept yet. The thing is, it's true, what she is going through is heartbreaking. She lost a friend that she is extremely close to. She says she loses friends a lot along the way from her childhood and up. But were those friendships ever as endearing as this one? The last person I can think of that left her behind that was a quote unquote friend was Alyssa and honestly, I wouldn't have cried for her. So whatever Shanae is feeling, it's valid, regardless of whether it is romantic or not. Plus, I don't really think Shanae is ready for romance yet, because she is still just trying to get by and accept herself and just be okay. Hey guys, so thank you so much for listening to me this week on all of these chapters. This episode was really in-depth for me. I had a lot of fun touching on all the aspects in Noel's life along with the other characters with him. I had meant to post this last week, but then I realized, you know what? I'm gonna post it for this week with the latest uh, webtoon release because I felt like Shanae and Noel themselves 
have a lot going on and I felt like this episode was really important to talk about as well. And I think a lot of people would agree because there's a lot going on and to be revealed in the future that I think would be so fundamental to these characters' growth. Let's go with that. And just a side note, this month is October. Isn't that exciting? It's one of my favorite months. I love Halloween. It's like the best month in the world. So this month, I'm hoping to do a cosplay event. And my request to all of you is that if you know anybody that does some bomb cosplay, I need you to send them uh, my account. Let them reach out to me because I really want to feature a lot of cool cosplay um, creators out there because I want to do a fun event at the end of the month where I promote a cosplay creator on Instagram and maybe on Twitter too. If you guys have anybody that you know, please let them reach out to me. I would love to promote them and that would just be so cool and fun and community building and just, you know, all the, the great things. Also, I have a Discord now. I'm not really that act active on it, but we do um, occasionally reach out to anybody who wants to chat. Uh, my friends and I plan to do a live stream at some point where we're going to watch some funny things and probably just do some webtoon discussion if anybody's interested in. So if you are on Discord, go ahead and, and include yourself into the chat room. That'll be exciting. Um, I have it in my link tree if you are interested in checking that out. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for checking me out. Now we're going to roll into the social media stuff I usually do. Let me know your thoughts and opinions of what we discussed today in this episode by messaging me through either of my social media handles. Both my Twitter and Instagram handles are at the Toon Balloon. I would love to hear from you. Also, definitely tell me any other webtoons, anime, or manga you're interested in, and I may talk about them in future episodes. The Toon Balloon podcast can be listened to on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and more. Now, let's end this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time to listen to my humble podcast. I look forward to talking with you again. This is the Toon Balloon Podcast. I was your host, Gooby. See you next time.